Hi everyone, I'm Binary Dragon, the GM for the actual play Cyberpunk Red podcast No Latency, and here are my GM tips for creating memorable service NPCs. Today we're going to talk about service NPCs. When creating a world or hub for your players, it's a really good idea to have its services be represented as NPCs. And I'll get to why they shouldn't be a vending machine a little bit later. These non-combat NPCs become something your players rely on, and as the story you're creating grows, gives genuine personality to the place you all play in. When creating these service NPCs, you may not even have to create a character sheet or stat block, but you should if your crew takes a liking to them. When you do make the sheet, don't forget to up the skills they have in their field, trading, and importantly in Cyberpunk Red, reputation. These service NPCs are often regulars of where they trade. Give them some local clout. Why else would your players interact with them in the first place? If you get stuck creating character sheets or stat blocks for your NPCs, check out the Danger Gal dossier or John John the Wise's video on the Three Goon method. But for the most part, you're going to be focusing on the roleplay aspect of these NPCs, since that's their main effect on the players. So don't sweat it too much. You can always level them up later. All of your service NPCs will need a basic service. However, for them to stand out, they'll need at least these four things. A service or skill, a secondary service or skill, a need, and a quirk. To give you an example, I've pulled a few NPCs from No Latency that the crew come back to all the time. Our first example is Tuna, and Tuna is a mechanic. His service is vehicle maintenance and vehicle sourcing. His secondary service is selling high-grade explosives in small amounts. His need from the players is in money and trade, and his quirk is his sarcastic attitude, his racing history, and his low British tone. He even has his own slogan, Tune Up at Tuners. Tuna is more than a mechanic to the crew. He's someone they rely on, and not always for a tune-up. Even if you don't want to put on a voice or accent as a GM, don't forget to choose a voice for them anyway. Even just saying, I also sell explosives, he speaks in a low gruff British tone as he raises an eyebrow at your steaming engine, gives the character personality. Even if you're not a performative GM, this doesn't mean that these quirks shouldn't be known by your players. Our second example is Sawtooth. Sawtooth is a medic. His service is as a medic and medical expert. His secondary service is therapy. He needs the player's money, but also their firepower because of his quirk. Sawtooth is an ex-solo, now medic, with a slight blood phobia, and he's a bit of a clean freak, which the players should remember. Sawtooth is more than a medic to the players, but less than one if they have one in the party, as a medic can come with you and heal you as you go. Even services your players already have in the party should be represented in the world, just in case they need a little bit more help or maybe some information. In No Latency, the crew do eventually get a medic as part of the party, but they still go to Sawtooth all the time. The third example from the show is Clive. Clive's service is as a weapon and armor seller. His secondary service is repairs. He needs money and firepower from the crew with the occasional mission that he divvies out, and his quirk is that he's quite peaceful, keeps himself to himself, and that he's Welsh. All of these NPCs were built on the same principles and continue to build relationships with the crew. And unlike a vending machine with an NPC, players can use non-combat skills like trading, acting, and even bureaucracy, giving players more reasons to invest in non-combat skills as your campaign continues. These service NPCs, for the most part, shouldn't be the best there is, but the best your players can afford. And even when your players need the big exotic stuff, your service NPCs can be the start of that, supplying information and even leads for your players to follow. 
These NPCs are your blacksmiths and potion sellers of the old D&D world, and in all settings this is one of the best ways to give your downtime needs personality and have them add to your journey overall. Now don't be afraid to be esoteric, throw in an interior decorator or a sign spinner here or there. You'll be surprised at how many NPCs you and your players remember if you give them reasons for being there, even the seemingly useless ones. Remember, they aren't the sellers of the rare stuff, just the everyday needs. Having the rarest items up for grabs at any moment will often make those items matter way less. A tool or a weapon that your players have worked for will always mean a lot more to them than the one they just walk down to the shop to buy. These NPCs only supply the mid-tier and below stuff and ammo, and only occasionally have their grubby mitts on something special, and usually for interesting reasons. Once your players are familiar with the service NPC, it's time to use them to gear up your players and push some of the story. Use what your players know about these characters to set up plot hooks and beats for your adventure. Perhaps someone in the city needs a mechanic. The players could point them to Tuna, and later on Tuna could thank them with a discount. A simple example, but still a way for the players to grow the relationship and get a reward a little bit later. Maybe they show up at Sawtooth's and the outside is filthy. If your players are paying attention, they know something is wrong since he's a neat freak, leveraging that quirk defined earlier, telling your party they might want to ready their weapons before they head inside. Oh, uh... Hey Clive, what's up? Oh, hello! Um, it's nice to hear from you. Are you alright there, Retro? Yeah, you know what? I'm doing fantastic. I'm doing really no, good right now. No, it's great that you're, that, that you're doing fine there, Retro. Um, now, um, uh, you know, uh, I'm not calling you, I'm, I'm calling you like I normally do all the time, because we're really good friends. So, um, I'll, I'll, I'll see you later. <laughs> Uh, yep, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll see you next time we come by. And I've got that new uh, gun that you wanted. Cool. I've been having that on back order for a month. So I've got, uh, let's say, I've got four guns here for you. Four of them, plus like a really big one. Yeah, we'll, we'll be over sometime later for sure. Oh, that's great. I'll see you later. Even something as innocent as a phone call or message can set up a nice plot hook for your players. Suddenly Clive could call them out of the blue and start talking about how they message all the time and that he has that weapon they ordered, but they haven't ordered anything and they don't talk to Clive all the time, giving the party a big clue that something's not quite right and that it might be time to check in on their old friend Clive. If you've made or have a map for where these NPCs reside, this also rewards your players. They know the location, its ins and outs, its characteristics, and if a fight does break out, even if they don't live there, their relationship with the service NPC and their NPC's location gives them a home advantage, if they've been paying attention, and a reason to protect it, upping the stakes. Use these out-of-character moments sparingly, spreading them out around the campaign so as not to make them predictable. Service NPC-based smaller missions, moments, and interactions will really create great reasons for your players to care about the adventure you're all sharing, and the people and locations they return to. These kinds of service NPC quests and moments are perfect for a short session where you as the GM want your players to accomplish a task without taking a break in the middle, like you might with a bigger quest or dungeon. Each of these service NPCs is specific and has limits, making your players' shopping choices day to day believable and sociable too. Service NPCs are non-combat roleplay and skill opportunities and, for the most part, are essential for the roleplay fight balance you're looking for as a GM in any TTRPG, not just Cyberpunk Red. But what do you think? Tell us in the comments and also let me know any memorable NPCs from your own games that you just can't forget. Thank you so much for checking out this video. I've been Binary. This is the No Latency YouTube channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out our podcast. And we'll see you next time in Night City.